We are so glad to see you here this morning. Thank you for coming and giving God praise by your presence in his house. And we've come today to worship and to celebrate. And we thank you for being a part of it. Oh, how he loves you and me. so very thankful today that God loves us. Would you stand as we join together in our call to worship? We're celebrating the fact that our Lord and Savior is not in a borrowed tomb, for He lives. Let's stand and worship Him together because He lives. God sent His Son, they call Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He bled and died, to buy my pardon, and empty grave is there. My Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know. Because he lives, how sweet to hold our newborn baby and feel the pride and the joy he gives, but greater still, the certain days because Christ lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight the life's I'll know he reigns. 
life is worth the living just because he lives. While you're standing, would you join me, please, in our responsive reading, The Lord Has Risen. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. The Lord has risen. The Lord has risen. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? For death has been swallowed up in victory. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Thanks be to God. The Lord has risen. risen Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we are so grateful today that we can truly come here today and celebrate an empty tomb, for the Lord is risen. And Lord, as we realize today that through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it is that which brings us into right relationship with you, Father. And we give you praise on this day. Lord, guide us in this service and all that we say and do, that it will bring glory and honor to you. Thank you, Lord, for each person gathered here in person and online. And I pray, God, that you just speak to them in powerful ways today, that you change hearts, Lord, that you bring us into a right relationship with you, that we truly can celebrate our walk and our journey of faith today. Guide us in this service, we pray. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray these things. And all of God's people said... Amen. I need you to take a moment to welcome each other into God's house. Would you do so, please? One of the joys of being a person of the faith is that we have these moments in our calendar that we celebrate God's mighty and powerful work. And when we think for just a moment about what Easter truly is all about and how this last week, how Jesus went through so very much in order to give of his life willingly on that cross and then to be laid into a borrowed tomb. But then as the prophecies foretold, on that third day, Jesus rose. That tomb was empty. 
And Jesus lived on earth for a period of 40 days after that until he went on to be with his Father in heaven. And when we gather during this time, it's fun for us to, to just truly celebrate all the things that are about Easter, but we never can truly forget what it's really all about. The gift of love, giving for you and for me so that you and I might have the opportunity to be forgiven of our sins. One of the most beautiful pictures in the church life of when someone comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is the act of baptism. In the Baptist church, if you're visiting from another denomination, the way we, we do this is we call it an ordinance of baptism. And what happens in this is when, when someone comes and accepts Jesus Christ freely, freely as their Lord and Savior, then they come into believer's baptism, which is simply a fact that they're coming to let the world know that their faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. And so today we have three who have come to celebrate that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and today they come to proclaim it to the rest of the world. Now, does it mean their life is perfect? No. Does it mean their life will never have difficulties? No. What it means is that Jesus will walk through all of it with them, the good and the bad. It means that they'll have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life daily. And so today, we get to celebrate that with them. So I'm going to ask that you be in prayer for them as they come, and that you be in prayer for them in their journey of faith. Because we always know that it can be a difficult time. But we're excited that they are proclaiming their faith and trust in Jesus Christ today as they come through the baptismal waters. Taylor? This is Kaylin, and everybody remembers her because she's been hanging out with our youth group for a while, and, and recently she accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior on one of our January trips to the Smoky Mountains. And so today she comes having proclaimed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And Kaylin, do you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Then today we will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Amen. Amen. This is Sarah, and we all know her because most of us <clears throat> are old enough to remember to grow up. <clears throat> but she has professed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior previously, and so she wants to follow through with her baptism. And so today she comes to let the world know that she's put her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Do you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Yes. And today mm -hmm. we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Diane, her sister, in case you haven't noticed. And she comes today also having professed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior previously and also following through in believer's baptism to let the world know that she's put her faith and trust in the Lord. So today, Diane, have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Then we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So what we get to do today is celebrate faith, celebrating the fact that these three young ladies have opened their hearts to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, to know that they are no longer burdened with the weight of sin in their life, to know that when they repent or they give their sins over, to know that their sins are removed from them as far as the east is from the west, and to know that they have that gift of eternal life, salvation, because of their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we celebrate with them today. I'm going to ask now if you will just take a moment. It's our prayer and praise time. And we're going to ask you to just simply have a conversation with the Lord today. That you pray in your time. That you give God some praise and you give God your burdens and lay them at his feet. And then in a few moments, BJ is going to come and, and lead you collectively in the closing prayer. Let's pray, church.
dear God, we come to you now in this time of stillness. Just thank you for this day. And as we say today, we come here today knowing that tomb is empty. He's alive and we have no fears. Our fears are gone. And Father, we took this time to celebrate this ordinance of baptism. Let us as a congregation to continue to be there for these three individuals. Let us guide them, support them in their journey, in their next journey in life. Father, we do got so much to be thankful for. We are truly blessed in the country we live in. But we know there are also needs. Father, we got people who have lost loved ones, people are hurting, people have health. But we know today, Father, that you are a comforter, a healer, and you provide for us in so many ways. And we just thank you for this and that I continue to ask you to lead us and guide us and do us, do you serve you in any way we can and spread your word, for this kind and for every state. Continue to lead and guide us in your most precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. do our offertory hymn this morning and the name of this song is Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's all stand.
I'm going to ask if you would please stand with me as we prepare our hearts for the reading of God's Word by singing a simple chorus. It says, it's in Christ alone. It's a great reminder for us about our relationship with Jesus Christ and how much we want to celebrate. So let's join our voices together, please, as we praise Him, in Christ alone. Gracious God, we are so very thankful today that we can come and gather here and worship and praise your holy name. Thank you for loving us so much that you made a way for us through your son Jesus, the ultimate sacrificial lamb. So Lord, guide us now, we pray, as we prepare for this time of worship and of your word and the celebration of your word. Go ahead of us and clear a path for us and give us the strength to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, and you may be seated. If you'll take your Bibles or your apps, whichever you prefer to use today, you'll see the scriptures from today. They're listed there on the screen, and we'll be covering a lot of ground today. This next song that I would like to sing this morning is one that I like to sing a lot at Easter because it's a very special song for a lot of us. It reminds us of how much Christ gave for us, how much He loves us, and all the the ways that He has expressed that love for us. And that to know that because our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that ultimately everything is okay. That we can have peace through our relationship with Him. So hear these words, this very, very familiar hymn, It Is Well.
peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to that cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul And the Lord haste the day when my face shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. Gracious God, thank you for the blessings and opportunities to fellowship and to worship and to praise. Guide us now as we open your word. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Romans 6.23 is where we'll start today, but let me just ask you to take for just a moment and walk back, if you would, through this past week. What it means for us as Christians to go through and experience Holy Week and, and all of our different churches, there have been all kinds of different traditions that we've expressed and, and experienced and they've been great. But think for just a moment what it was like for Jesus just in the last seven days. 
You know, just a week ago, we gathered here in this place and we were celebrating that triumphant entry into the city as Jesus was coming in and we had the kids bring the palms down the aisle and they were waving and we were singing hosannas and we were getting excited about what it must have been like back in that day when Jesus came into that city. And it was such a, a mighty thing to see. People were excited because they'd heard about Jesus. They'd heard how he changed lives and they wanted to be a part of it. And so Jesus comes into that city and just does incredible things. But you know, in just a matter of hours, things begin to change. Jesus goes into the temple and he begins to see how man has corrupted the process of worship and prayer. And you remember the story. Jesus went in and he overturned the tables and he ran the money changers out and got rid of them. And then in just a few hours later, we see that Judas, who is supposed to be one of those who is committed to following Jesus, betrays him for just a few coins. He makes a deal to turn Jesus over later in the week. On Thursday, Jesus gathered with his disciples in a room to celebrate Passover, to celebrate the miracle of God in the past and how the power of God had saved those people. And so they were gathered there and Jesus gathered the leftovers and he, he blessed them and he talked about all the things that were about to happen in the next few days, about how he's going to give his life and how he becomes the ultimate sacrifice, but how he will come again. And so we see this and then a few minutes later he leaves that room and Scripture teaches us that he goes out into the garden to pray. To pray. And in that time of prayer, he's praying to God, his Father, about what he knows is about to take place. While he's there praying, he's arrested, he's beaten, and he's tried in some illegal trials. And he's found guilty, even though he's, he is innocent. He's taken on Friday and he's put on the cross. And people have often said to me, they wonder why we call it Good Friday. Well, the reason it's called Good Friday is because it's good for us. It's good for us because it's on that Good Friday that the price of our sins was paid. Later, Jesus is taken down from the cross and put into a borrowed tomb. And a stone is placed over that tomb because they don't want anybody going in or out. But you know what happens on Sunday. On Sunday, that great, great story. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So people have often asked me as a minister, why did all of this have to take place? Why did all of these things have to come into being? And I want to challenge you to look at Romans 6.23 for just a moment, either on your app or in the Bible that you have with you, please. And here's why this all had to take place. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Rome, and he wanted to explain to them how important it was that they be in right relationship with God. Because here's what he writes. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what Paul is saying is sin separates us from God. Sin keeps us from having a relationship with God. And the cost of those sins in our life, if they're not paid, is eternal separation from God. Eternal separation. That's what this reference to death means. Eternal separation from God. But it follows up with the good news because it says the gift of God is eternal life that's given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we know there's a problem. We know there's an issue there. There's sin, and sin has to be paid. And the way that it's paid is because of this gift given. Now, John 20, please, beginning in verse 1 through 10. Let's pick up the story where it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. And so Peter and the other disciples started to the tomb. Both were running, but other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. The tomb first and they bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but they didn't go in. And then Simon Peter came along behind, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw those strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. That cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. And finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside, and he saw and he believed. Verse 9 follows up because it says, They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead, and then the disciples went back to where they were staying. You see, Mary Magdalene and the others went to this tomb because they had gone to, to pay their respects. And when they got there, that tomb had been broken into, it looked like, because a huge stone was in front of it. All of a sudden, that stone was gone. And the body of Jesus was not there. 
So she ran back to tell the disciples and they came running to see for themselves. And yes, they looked in there and they realized that he wasn't there. But the linen cloths were laying there. The, the cloths that they were used to wrap his body, they were still there. And if you read the other gospel accounts, which we talked about this morning in our sunrise service, the question is asked by the, the images that were there, why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here. And that's the great question for us today to think about. Do we just keep Jesus on the cross? Do we just keep Jesus in the tomb? Well, I'm here to tell you today, no, because that tomb is empty. Jesus willingly gave his life for you and for me on that cross because he loves us. He willingly gave absolutely everything so that if we come to him, accept him as our Lord and Savior, put our faith and trust in him, then we get to have that gift of eternal life. We get to be proclaimed as a child of God, a co-heir with Christ. Now please, John chapter 3. Go back a few pages in your gospel. The scripture is important for us because it's again a reminder of why all of this had to take place and how it all unfolded for you. Most of you grew up in Bible school and Sunday school learning John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe it that him would not perish but have everlasting life. Do you hear that? For those of you who put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you understand that He is the Son of God. You understand that He was buried in a tomb and that He rose again. And through your faith and trust in Him, you now become the dwelling place for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now we often talk about it in this church. The struggle then begins is how do we let the Holy Spirit lead? Because oftentimes we want to be in control, right? Amen or oh me. A lot of times we want to be in control. But learning to walk in the power of the presence is learning to walk with the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. And the Gospel of John says, God loved us so very much that He gave absolutely everything through His only Son that whoever would put their faith and trust in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I love verse 17. It's one of my favorites. God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through Him. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe sometimes in your life there have been these moments when you've had things not go quite like you thought they should. Maybe you've had a little pity party a time or two. I know I have. There have been moments when things have not gone according to my schedule or the way I thought it should have gone. And I have to be reminded sometimes that even in the midst of the complications of life, God still loves us. And even in the midst of the complications and challenges that we face every day, Jesus didn't come to condemn us. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to provide a way out for us. So he didn't come into the world to condemn. But through him, you and I have the opportunity to be saved. Verse 18 continues, For whoever believes in him is not condemned. You see that? For whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because they've not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Folks, on this Easter Sunday, when we get together and gather and celebrate with family and friends, my prayer for each of you is that you have had the opportunity to understand what these scriptures mean. That you've had the opportunity in your own personal life to open your heart and ask Jesus Christ to come in as your Lord and Savior so that you can experience this gift of eternal life. So that you can find out what it means to be forgiven of sin which separates us from God except Jesus pays the price and he bridges that gap for us so that we can be in right relationship with God. On this day, especially on this day, you realize all that was sacrificed for you and for me. Jesus Christ gave everything for you and me. And we have the opportunity today to come before him and to declare that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Paul in Romans chapter 10, 9 says that if you will declare it with your mouth and if you will believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You got to believe it. You got to proclaim it. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he was raised from that tomb. And when you do that, you're given the gift of eternal life. You're given the gift to be able to walk with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because as I said earlier, when you accept Jesus, when you ask Jesus into your heart, the Word of God says in the Old Testament that the Holy Spirit dwelt among them. 
But when the New Testament it says the Holy Spirit dwelt within them, when you put your faith and trust in Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. You have the opportunity to be a part of God's ultimate plan. Scripture says you're a co-heir with Christ in your relationship with Jesus. So my prayer for you is that you know Jesus this morning. In a few moments, we'll have a hymn of invitation. And after the hymn, I'll just say to you, please come see me after the service. Let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. If you need to, to get things right with God today, don't pass this day up. Let's be sure that when you leave this place today, that your heart is right with God, that you're in the right frame of mind, the right fellowship with God, because you truly believe that He is the Son of God, and you truly believe that Jesus gave it all for you because of love. He loves you. And he became that sacrificial lamb for you. Would you bow your heads for just a moment, please? I want you just to, to think today about your personal walk with Christ. Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus? Have you asked him into your heart? If you have not, I just pray that if God is tugging at your heart today, that you'll just simply say, Lord, here I am. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And be my Lord and Savior. If you'll say those words to Him, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. The Apostle Paul says, if you'll call upon Him like that, then you will be saved. But you've got to believe it. Christian, maybe you've been in this journey of faith for a while and you've sort of lost your excitement of your, your salvation. And my prayer for you this morning that He rekindles that flame in your heart and you get excited again about what Jesus is doing in your life and what He wants to continue to do in your life each and every day. And maybe today you just need to make a prayer, Lord, today revive me in that, that walk with you. Help me to have a fresh new spirit and journey with you today. Whatever it is God's calling you to do, I pray that He will move in your heart and that you will be receptive and as I said, if God's doing something in your heart and life today, come by after the service and let's celebrate it together. Gracious God, thank you for this wonderful day of celebration. For the opportunity we've been given today to come and to worship and to celebrate the decisions that others have made to open their heart to receive you. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the reminder of how much Jesus loves us and gave everything for us. So that through our faith and trust in him, we are children of God. Lord, lead us now, we pray, in this time of invitation. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is a simple and familiar hymn that just simply says, there's room at that cross. You can come and gather at the foot of the cross and pray to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to know that he will not leave you there alone. Again, if God's doing something in your life and your heart, would you come up after the service and let's pray and let's celebrate His power and working. But right now, let's stand as we sing together, The Room at the Cross. The cross upon which Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide. And it's great. fountain as wide as the sea there's room at the cross for you there's room at the cross for you though millions have come there's still room for one yes there's room at the cross for you have found him a friend and have heard from the sins they have sinned. The Savior still waits to open the gates and welcome a sinner before it's too late. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, 
Jesus grew at the cross for you. We want to thank you so much for coming today, for gathering here and for worshiping God. And we thank you and praise you or praise him for allowing you to be with us today. There's some announcements in your bulletin, so please take a moment to flip over there and check those announcements out. If you're visiting with us, I hope you had an opportunity to fill out a visitor card or sign the register in the back. Thank you so much for coming. And if you don't have a church home, you do now. You're always welcome here. We'd love to have you. We thank you so much. And we also want to thank April and George Cranda for the beautiful flowers that they've given us today. Thank you for those flowers. Anything else you need to share with us before we go? I'm going to ask Sarah and Diane and their families if they'll just come up here for just a moment, please, and stand over here to the side. And they're going to stand, and if you would like to come by and welcome them into the fellowship, I hope that you'll do just that. And I want to ask Kaylin if she'll come up and stand with them, too. We've already greeted Kaylin once, but we're going to do it again. So, Kaylin, you come on up. And so you just take the opportunity, if you would, to come by and to just welcome them into God's family. We're so excited to have them officially as part of the family. I mean, they've been here anyway, right? But we're excited to have them officially be part of the family. Just come right over here, and you all come by and, and welcome them in uh, to God's house. Thank you again so much for coming and being a part of the service. And we just want to give God praise that you saw fit to come today and to worship. Because I know there are a lot of other places you could have been. There are a lot of other things you could have done. But today you honored God by being in his house. And thank you for that. I'm going to ask if our deacon of the week would lead us now in our prayer. David. Amen. Amen.